Although starvation, AIDS, and overpopulation often are blamed for the high rate of infant and child mortality, malaria is the number one killer of children in Africa. Have you ever wondered why, if malaria is preventable, why millions of children in Africa are dying? There are literally millions of mothers and children living each and every night in total darkness, fear of dying with absolutely no defense. You see, it's impossible to afford power, remodel, add a window, or install protective screens. This same disease was a major crisis in the U.S. in the 1940s through the late 50s, perhaps early 60s. According to scientific field research data, the banning of DDT could be the cause. Since indoor spraying of the insecticide was banned, Death in children five years old and younger caused by malaria has skyrocketed throughout Africa. The ban was meant to protect the health of these youngsters, but it may have had the opposite effect. Dr. Donald Roberts, an internationally renowned expert on controlling malaria, will explain. Let's listen in on part of a recent interview recorded live in Africa. So there are reasons why malaria is such a huge problem in rural areas. That, however, does not really explain why in the United States we carried out a, 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 an eradication effort that was successful and then we sustained it. And how did we sustain it? We sustained it largely on the basis of growing wealth and improved living standards. Uh, houses were more uniformly screened. Houses with growing wealth were more well constructed. And any discussion about the use of the DDT or insecticides in general has to do with safety. And I can say with, with absolute certainty that all the chemicals that are presently recommended for use in malaria control programs are safe. They are safe. They do not cause cancer. Um, and at the doses used, they are totally safe for human exposure. And that's also true for DDT. It is a safe chemical, and I say that based on our experience with actual use not experience in the laboratory, uh, uh, not experience in the, uh, in the, uh, in the research uh, that has been done that is suggestive that it will cause this kind of harm or that kind of harm or some other kind of harm. I am talking about real, actual use of chemical in the field. And what we see from an, a history of decades of use of DDT in the field with hundreds of millions of houses being sprayed, hundreds of millions of families living in houses that are sprayed with this chemical, with studies that were conducted by the World Health Organization, by other organizations looking for an adverse effect on the humans that live in those houses, sometimes large-scale studies, sometimes small-scale studies, what we see is no effect, no adverse impact on the health of those residents. And keep in mind, the chemical is sprayed on the house wall. It's not given for, to people to eat. Uh, it's not sprayed on their food. It is sprayed on the wall. And they live within the confines of that environment with DDT on the house wall. And to this day, there is no scientific evidence that DDT on that inner wall will cause environmental harm or will cause public health harm. Please, we can give every child in Africa the opportunity for a healthy life. You can be that life-saving force. Isn't it worth a moment of your time to help better the life of even one child? Don't 
forget Africa because our children are dying here. Not because we are doing nothing, but our resources are very, very limited. Our income is very, very limited. The malaria is killing many people than AIDS here because in one week time a baby is gone. Find out more about malaria prevention by visiting our charamission.org website.